In order to make this video, I need you to completely understand. I goofed. I ended up making some TikToks talking about episodes 1 to 5 of Black Mirror on Netflix. Unbeknown to me that Netflix galaxy brained and started me off immediately at season 6. So I've decided to make a video rating the newest episodes out of 10 since Netflix wanted me to see them so badly that they forced me to skip seasons 1 to 5. Before we begin, let's point out the obvious. Black Mirror is a sci-fi show that has been airing since 2011, which canonically means it started a year before my YouTube channel. Do the math yourself, coward. But unfortunately, in 2011, I was too focused on Halo and Mountain Dew to realize Netflix even existed. Thankfully, I transformed into a boring adult who settled for watching criticisms of entertainment. Thanks, Madvocate, for making me hate everything that deserves it. And thanks, Charlie, for making me hate everyone that deserves it. I'm not here to completely shit on the series, so let's give it a whirl. The first episode, Joan is Awful, starts with our protagonist going through her simple daily routines until a mysterious text message prompts the audience to believe she is cheating on her significant other. She says hi to her neighbor, jams out to some cringe on her way to work, and then complains about her coffee, at which then this guy says he'll have them check the machine? Wait, what? We're just immediately jumping to an issue with the coffee machine instead of operator error? Like it's not a skill issue? That's okay, I guess, since it's really not a big deal. Joan ends up receiving more text messages from her mysterious ex just before firing an employee who points out that they'll be increasing their carbon footprint and breaching environmental pledges. This is because they're choosing to not use the employee's audio compression algorithm, which would compress the files to be more manageable. She says without them, they would need more data servers. The attention to detail in the scene is pretty impressive, and I give the writers bigger props for being consistent instead of just using bid science words to convince the reader. Joan decides to then complain to her therapist about her significant other, Krish, and reveals that she misses her ex, Mac. Are you getting it yet? Joan is actually fucking awful, and that's okay. It's okay to establish a terrible character when the character isn't a fucking superhero. Ahem, <clears throat> are you listening, CW? Joan specifies that she doesn't feel like the main character of her own life. Okay, She-Hulk. Which foreshadows the rest of the episode respectfully. I actually really love that we added this in the episode so early on since we're so far away from the concept of her not being real. That when we do reach that point, it was a big mindfuck. Joan ends up meeting with her ex. Shocker, she's a shitty person. She actually ends up asking Mac how she could trust him after breaking up with her? <laughs> I can't actually believe she would say this to him considering they haven't even established that he did anything wrong. All they've established at this point is that he broke up with her and broke her heart without explanation. Good job. She's literally cheating on the man she said she wants to marry and this idiot actually acts like she isn't going to be doing the same thing to him. Right here we have a man blinded by pussy, which isn't entirely uncommon so I'd say it's stupid but believable at least. Jesus Christ Joan, you are so fucking awful. She comes home and we revisit the point made about her fucking hatred for Chris's cooking. Just tell the fucking guy that you want more seasoning in the food. It's not mean to simply ask your significant other if they can cook something different for you, or to make suggestions for their cooking. If Chris is offended by you suggesting to season his food, then he's a pussy. But Joan has to be awful, so we get this cringe of Joan pretending to like Chris's tasteless food. The couple rests on the couch to watch some Streamberry, where they reference the next episode, Lock Henry. Nice. Good one, guys. We'll get to Lock Henry soon, you degenerates. They find a show called Joan is Awful, and we discovered that it's an exact replica of her day, played by Salma Hayek. We get this epic scene of Joan having an intense panic attack after realizing Chris is going to find out about Mac. Well, just feel the floor. Feel the floor! <laughs> Honestly, the scene was so good, I was panicking for her, even though I was rooting against her this entire time. Chris leaves, and Joan is forced to face this reality of her new Streamberry show. We get this awesome outside perspective of her 
peers witnessing the release of this shit show. Joan has this stupid epiphany that everyone can watch the show. Of course they can. It's on a streaming service. I'll ignore her stupidity in the scene since it's possible that it could have been overshadowed by her anxiety involving Christian Mac. I would just personally think it would make more sense for a character to be more concerned with how they ended up getting this information. Am I being spied on? Are there cameras? But maybe since the whole thing is out of her control, she's focused on something that she knows is coming and maybe has more control over, aka Chris finding out about her kissing Mac. Chris rightfully leaves this awful fucking Joan, and we're left with Joan trying to figure this entire thing out on her own. The next day, Joan is immediately the center of attention and fired at her job because of the information leaking about the environmental pledges being broken. Oh, this is the first time I've hated someone more than Joan. Her bosses, whoever they are, there are clearly multiple of them since they're part of a board. None of this would have happened if they hadn't told Joan to fire her employee in the first place. They actively broke their own pledge and are paying the price for it by firing Joan and not the person that told her to do it. Let's just go on and assume the entire board unanimously agreed to break their environmental pledges willingly and that they're all worse than Joan. Moving on, Joan ends up talking to her lawyer to find a solution for her recent exposure. Apparently, signing up for Streamberry is the same as the Human Sentai Pad episode of South Park. Joan just agrees to the term of conditions when signing up for Streamberry to begin with. Sounds illegal. Joan leaves to see Matt again and they get into an argument because he can't even get it up in bed. Surprising to me that she would willingly do this even though the entire world is criticizing her for going back to see Mac to begin with. I guess she didn't want to come up with a simple solution like, become the most boring person in existence and no one will watch the show. But instead, she does the opposite and shits in a church during a wedding in front of children to maybe piss off Salma Hayek because why? What's Salma Hayek supposed to do? Oh, she finds out she's also in an unreasonably made contract with Streamberry. Sounds illegal and joins up with Joan to destroy the system. There was no guarantee that this was going to happen, so Joan is an idiot. She willingly took a shit in a church in front of children on the idea that maybe Salma Hayek would do something to shut the show down. <laughs> At this point, it's safe to assume the show shouldn't be called Joan is Awful and should be rightfully retitled Joan is an Idiot. She could have blatantly ignored the show and lived a boring life with no ratings so the viewers would just stop watching after time. It's not like everyone knows she's a real person. She's literally one person in one city. She can just start again and leave. Or maybe even make a documentary about Streamberry exposing her own personal life after taking advantage of her... Ugh, oh, fuck, what the fuck is happening here? And later you find out they're going to try to do it to everybody fucking else. Wouldn't Streamberry be more concerned considering the fact that they would be exposing the personal lives of 800 million people? Maybe the 800 million rioting civilians parading up to your front door wouldn't be a good idea. Joan and Salma Hayek kind of just walk into Streamberry where they witness this plan to launch more shows that did get the personal lives of 800 million people. So it's not like Joan knew this information prior. So her wanting to take down Streamberry by herself where it's despite the intense lack of security revolving a fucking quantum computer that can magically perceive into her her personal life from inside her own home. But instead, we're met with Michael Sarah, who tells Joan that she isn't the original Joan. It doesn't make any fucking sense. If the show is about the source Joan, then that would mean source Michael Sarah would have to have told source Joan that she isn't the real Joan either, in order for the quantum computer to allow the scene to even fucking happen in the first place. So Michael Sarah just gains the spontaneous self awareness and leads Joan into believing that she's not real. Why did he gain self-awareness? It would be nice to explain what's happening in your show. He even goes on to tell them they are coded to believe that they're real, which would mean that they wouldn't be able to comprehend or believe what you're saying to them. We're not in reality right now. This is fictive level one. Now that level one Joan has sentience, we get this cool scene of her saying that she can't stop herself from destroying the quantum computer because Source Joan 
Joan already has, and the show inevitably ends with Joan ending up on house arrest. I liked this episode because it was fun. It was some of the best acting I've seen in a while, but was it perfect? Absolutely not. There were a lot of big open plot holes, but it seemed too confusing to really explain properly to the average viewer. Now don't get me wrong, I liked this episode because it was fun and had some really strong acting. Was it really good? Yeah, it was okay. Was it perfect? Absolutely not. I'm giving it a fat 8 out of 10 yes! because I really did enjoy the acting and cinematography. Yeah, there were some pretty big inconsistencies, but at the same time, it really wasn't that bad and these inconsistencies weren't extremely apparent. It went kind of quickly here at the end, so I don't think it was really out of the realm of possibility. It's not like their main protagonist was, I don't know, a fucking hero who was actually just awful the entire time. CW. Complete.